Hi everyone, I'm Nathan with TheEvoGreeter.com. For this video, I'm going to do a comparison review between the Kindle Voyage here on the left and the Klobo Glow HD on the right. So, uh, these devices both have 300 ppi ink cardo screens. I did a comparison review yesterday showing the screens uh, close up in 1080p. So if you want to see that, check uh, the TheEvoGreeter YouTube channel or the TheEvoGreeter log. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to talk about the other differences between these guys. Uh, and I'm going to show you uh, some of the different font choices and let's go over the hardware first. So this is the Glow HD. Um, uh, one of the main differences between these devices you can see straight off is the Voyage is quite a bit thinner. It's also lighter and it has this uh, glass front where everything's on one level and then the um, Glow HD has the infrared touchscreen which requires the like indentation right there. As you can see there's that little piece of plastic that does catch some light um, so that does kind of reflect back at times, but uh, so that's uh, another difference between these guys uh, You got the infrared and the capacitive touch screens. Uh, they effectively work about the same So I can't really uh, say one's better than the other so Other things that differentiate the voyage is it has these page sensor buttons here on the left and right side of the screen You can program them uh, to detect different uh, levels of pressure and they also uh, you can have them give off feedback uh, when you press them, so uh, it's just uh, another extra feature with the Voyage. Uh, the uh, Glow, it doesn't have any buttons, of course, you use the touch screen to turn pages. Um, and then you also have uh, the same uh, amount of storage on these devices, 4 gigabytes, and they both have the uh, micro USB uh, in the bottom of the device there. And the Kindle has a power button on the back, and this sort of has like a textured back, it feels pretty cool and then it has the power button on top so neither of them have memory card slots usually Kobo's do but this Kobo does not uh, so it's a lot more Kindle like in that regard okay so I want to go ahead and show the front lights now I got the lights off in here so it's rather dark uh, this is the biggest difference between these two guys in my opinion uh, when you have them side by side like this you really just see uh, how much a difference in t tone there is with the front light so right now um, I don't have the front light all the way up it's sort of comparable uh, the Kindle Voyage Let's go ahead and put them both all the way up here. As you can see, the Voyage definitely, uh, it seems brighter when you have it full brightness. The Glow uh, HD seems uh, brighter in the mid-level brightness. And then when we had the mid-level brightness, you could sort of see the glow. You could see the difference in the color better. Uh, the Kindle uh, has more of a uh, red tone-ish, sort of a pinkish tone, I mean. Um, and the, the Glow HD is, is definitely lighter um, in tone uh, than the Kindle uh, Voyages is and also I like how you can adjust the front light brightness just by sliding along the left side of the screen here so you can really fine tune it how you want. I really do like that feature because uh, it does take a lot of fine tuning. The Kindles it has the uh, auto brightness sensor you can turn on auto brightness with the Voyage and it will automatically adjust based on your lighting conditions. So here's sort of a comparable lower level brightness as you can see the difference isn't as noticeable now as it was earlier as far as the color difference is but in person you can sort of see more of a uh, sort of a bluish gray tone to the glow screen and more of a pinkish tone to the Kindle screen so there is quite a bit of difference in the front light just the way the color of it and the tone and the temperature but you know they vary so much between each device you can't really take take this review as like a definite thing because they do vary a lot between individual devices so it sort of just depends on individual screen really. So both devices they have a good range of settings. The uh, Voyage doesn't go completely off but it's basically off when you have it all the way down and then the uh, Glows you definitely can turn it off uh, completely but um, so they do look very similar at low light levels. You can get them just really barely on and it's really good for uh, night reading. You can barely even tell that there's glow there so it's really nice when you're reading at night. So the next thing I want to talk about is fonts. This is where these two devices differ a lot. Uh, so with my uh, screen comparison review and right here you can see that I have the same font loaded on these guys so they look very similar. Um, it's a font that's embedded with Calibre. So um, it, it's, yeah, it's the same font in both books. So uh, let me go ahead and show you a little more of a realistic setup for these devices because the Kindle, the uh, only way you can uh, get different fonts is if you embed them in the book. So most devices, or most any ebook, you only have these six choices right here. So let's go ahead and compare this font uh, with a uh, Kobo book because the uh, Kobo has the same font as well. We'll load this up and we can show you where the advantages uh, with the Kobo fonts are. So you can also load in your own fonts that you use in here. Um, one thing is when you load in your own fonts in the font folder, so you don't have to embed the fonts uh, like you do with the Kindle, but um, you can't use the advanced options when you use these uh, side-loaded fonts and they also don't render right on EPUBs. 
Like this font looks really weird if I use the EPUB engine. Uh, right now it's using the Kobo's uh, EPUB engine, so it looks totally good and totally fine. But um, let me go ahead and talk about this font right here. Let's load the same font on these two devices. Let me get it a little bit bigger so you can see it on the screen here. Let me go ahead and just increase it a little bit here. And both of these are about the same. Um, I'll go ahead and make it even bigger because I know it doesn't show really well on this camera. Um, Kindle, one thing about the Voyager screen, it doesn't seem to respond well to light presses. You really do have to give it more of a solid press with the uh, capacitive screen I've seemed to notice, especially on the lower edge down here. I can't really get it to activate a lot of times, but that's a topic for another tale. Let's go back to the fonts here. So let's talk about this font here. This is what's really cool about this uh, Voyage or the uh, Kobo devices, um, the uh, Glow HD here, and you know, you have the H2O and the other devices, is you can uh, customize the weight of the uh, preloaded fonts here, and there's quite a list of them. You got a bunch of different font choices preloaded here. So uh, you can uh, increase the darkness of the text by increasing the weight, and that does make the text look quite a bit bolder than the Kindles. So with the Kindles, you can't increase the font or anything, or font weight or anything like that. So that's the advantage with the Kobo, is you can make the text appear bolder and darker than it does on the Kindles, where it's a little bit more sharper on the Kindle uh, when you're using uh, these same fonts to compare with. Um, so the Kobo also has more line spacing and margin adjustments, adjustment options than the Kindle. With the Kindle we have these three options right here. You can have really super huge margins. So you have a little more limited choices as far as the layout is concerned uh, with the um, Kindles than you do with the Kobos. You do have more line spacing and more font size options. You got a lot more font size options. Um, and then so you got the more font choice options and you also have this justification option. So if you didn't like want the weird spacing, you can have the uh, have it left justified. So you got some different options as far as that goes. One thing with the Kobos though is probably a little less consistent than the Kindles formatting. Kindle books are pretty much all formatted to look exactly the same. So um, with Kobo books, some of them have spaces and some of them don't. So it's sort of a little bit uh, a different aspect as far as layout goes. As far as software features are concerned, you have a lot of the same kind of features on both of these guys. You can uh, hold down on a word, bring up the dictionary, of course, with the Kobo. Same deal with the Kindle. Uh, the Kindle has a few other things like the uh, it has... Um, Vocabulary builder, so whenever you look up a word in the dictionary that gets added to your vocabulary a list that you can uh, check out with flashcards later on. Um, we've also got uh, the instant translations right here. So you can translate words using this um, with these languages right here, these translation dictionaries. doesn't always work as well as like the translation is on the Kindle. You have a whole bunch of choices here as far as languages are concerned. It does require an internet connection though. Okay, with the Kobo. We've got the usual uh, notes and highlights. You can add notes, text highlights, and I don't know what it is, but used to Kobo is seeming to be kind of a little slow on the reaction of the um, adding highlights and stuff, but I've been having better luck with it lately. Like I can move the cursor a little better. So it's actually working quite well as far as that's concerned. You got the notes, the highlights, you can run searches. So let's go ahead and run a search on both of these guys really quick. You can run, what's cool about this one is you can run um, just searches with Google as well. So the Kindle, it doesn't have Google. I think it used to have, I'm pretty sure it used to have a thing where you could look up Google, but it doesn't anymore. It has uh, just the Wikipedia lookup, which you can look up right here within this. And with the Kin or the Kobo, it opens a sort of a web browser type window. You can use the scroll right there. And then you can use the uh, Google search right here. And you can also look things up on Wikipedia from directly within the ebook. So that's kind of a cool feature to have if you just come across the term or uh, a name or something you want to search. Uh, online for it. Um, so that's a, another thing with the Kindle here is you see with the x-ray you've got the x-ray feature that tells us different information in the book. Uh, it tells us about the characters. You can get a brief description about characters and stuff like that. Kobo used to have this thing called Beyond the Book where it gave you basic information but they've actually removed that. Um, sometimes the little thing still shows up on some books but it just gives related titles. It doesn't give any actual information as far as the contents of the book is concerned. So both of these devices have sort of a uh, estimated reading thing right here. So it kind of shows you what the chapters are coming up, how long they are basically, how long it will take you to read uh, the rest of the book. You can uh, customize this in settings. So it's a little bit different than the Kindles. You just have this little thing down here. I'm surprised it's working. Usually I tap down here and it doesn't work, but it's working fantastic right now. Actually, it's not all of a sudden, but there we go. So you can get the different uh, estimations right here. 36 minutes left in chapter. 
and then it'll to give you an estimated time for the book as well. So you got the estimated uh, reading time on both of these guys. Uh, they both have the same similar kind of a navigation uh, elements. Uh, you got the uh, table of contents you can use to jump around. And then we've also got, you can jump through chapters right here by pushing that button. So they all got the same sort of thing where the Kindle you swipe up from the bottom you can jump chapters right here. And they also, it gives you a preview so you can scan through pages kind of fast if you don't want to leave this page. Uh, so like if you both, both of them have like a back button so if you want to go back to where you were um, previously before jumping around the book. So they've all got similar features as far as that's concerned, as far as the reading features. So both devices have the onboard store where you can uh, shop for ebooks, the uh, Kindle, obviously you're just lo uh, relegated basically to the Amazon store, whereas uh, Kobo you can get EPUB ebooks from other places obviously. Um, but we can go ahead and shop in here. The Kobo bookstore is actually pretty quick when it, uh, as far as loading things is concerned. Um, you don't have quite as many um, search choices and one thing that they do lack is like uh, a long description it only gives a synopsis uh, synopsis of the description and it just cuts the rest of it off you can't like scroll through it or get any info whereas the kindle you do have like you can get the uh, reviews you can read the reviews on here if you scroll down you got the whole uh, list of reviews you can read through and then you can also show the full description so you get a little bit more uh, shopping options as far as that's concerned because you can easily read the reviews and the whole description of the book from on the device whereas you only get like a little snippet here but you can just hit that button right there to get the preview same with the Kindle try the sample so you can get them really fast and easy as far as that's concerned uh, Kindle also has the Goodreads integration so um, you can uh, recommend books and stuff on there and it also has the tie-in with Facebook and Twitter for social sharing. The uh, Glow HD has a Facebook tie-in for social sharing. So the home screens are quite a bit different on these devices. Uh, the, the Kobos have this tile layout and you can uh, like access things like the web browser directly from here. Uh, you can dismiss these titles, you get like recommended stuff here. Uh, where the Kindle, it has this recommended thing on the bottom normally but you can remove that in settings. And like this one it has ads because it's the ad supported model. Uh, so then the Kobo has the library view in a different section over here and then the the uh, Kindle has everything on the cloud over there and then your library is right here as well and you can sort by uh, individual items like books and periodicals so the Kindle the Kobo has the same sort of deal but you do have a couple of additional settings as far as filtering uh, by file size and file type and stuff like that so you do have a couple more options as far as the layout is concerned both of these devices have collections so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this review right here uh, it's getting pretty long so you can go ahead and check out the ebookreader.com for some additional information uh, check out the individual reviews for these devices for a complete rundown of their features and I'll go ahead and be uploading some more comparison reviews and uh, review the Glow HD uh, in a couple days so check those out as well thank you guys for watching and you have a good day